This coming Thursday, May 27th, will be the 15th anniversary of my ordination to priesthood. I like being a priest, and I think that I got my vocation right, but if I had not had a vocation to the priesthood, I think I might like to be a hype man. Some of you, maybe the more mature, certainly might not know what a hype man is. In the entertainment industry, a hype man is the sort of the supporting actor for a singer, the the principal act, like the main attraction. He's a support to the main attraction. The hype man punctuates the soloist performance with high energy exclamations in a way that often contrasts with and complements the soloist style. He is likely to incorporate elements of comedy into his routine as he engages his audience with poses, gestures, and even dance moves. The effect of his hype is to maintain high levels of energy, interest, and engagement throughout the soloist's performance. William Jonathan Drayton Jr. is considered the best hype man of all time, essentially undisputed greatest hype man of all time. Perhaps you recall his penchant for wearing a clock around his neck and know him by his stage name. Say it with me, Flavor Flav. Right? Undisputed. Greatest hype man ever. In a certain way, I am a hype man for our dear pastor, Father Erickson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, (laughs) Punctuating our parish's sacramental and educational offerings with colorful, emotional content. Yeah, boy! (laughs) But my hype is not principally rooted in and focused on my friend and classmate, Father Erickson, who, of course, is also celebrating his 15th anniversary on Thursday. My hype is focused on Jesus and is rooted in the Holy Spirit. Now, gee, you might assume and expect that my role as a hype man for Jesus is a consequence of my priesthood, but you would be wrong. Surely my ordination does provide privileged opportunities and venues into which I impose and exercise my hype, including this very opportunity I am enjoying right now. And the grace of my ordination adds greater potential to my hype, but my role as a hype man for Jesus is a consequence of my confirmation. The sacrament that, as the catechism says, perpetuates the grace, perpetuates the grace of Pentecost in the church. Yo, 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 no doubt, no doubt. You can decide where the quote began and ended. We hear the Pentecost story of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles in our first reading. It was this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that allowed them to speak in tongues of the mighty acts of God. Right after this, St. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and gave a divinely inspired sermon that concluded with the following. Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucify. St. Peter's Pentecost sermon was so powerful that 3,000 people who heard him were baptized. Of course, it goes without saying that the power of his message did did not have its origin in the the musings of a Galilean fisherman, its power and the conviction that the people felt came from the Holy Spirit whom St. Peter had just received. It may have occurred to you all that if all that I've said to this point is true, then in a certain way the Holy Spirit is the principal hype man for Jesus. And I have, in a certain sense, come to that conclusion myself. There is, of course, even more biblical evidence for this. I think we can see it when we, if we spend some time with the gospel passage we just heard, but certainly in the reading 
from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in which he says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. But just as our friend Flavor Flav had colorful costumes incorporating clocks, the Holy Spirit needs costumes to get out the hype about Jesus. And boy, does he have costumes. This is where you and I come in. Each of us, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we receive in our baptism, and then especially in confirmation, have been added to the Holy Spirit's wardrobe, empowered to be the hype, the hype men and women for Jesus, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Now, despite the doubts you are likely feeling, you have what it takes to be a hype man or a hype woman for Jesus, and you can do it, not because of any natural gift or lack of natural gift you have, but because of the gift of the Holy Spirit you have received in baptism and confirmation. Yes, it, it will take some work, you will need to tailor your hype craft. We even just put out a vid video on our YouTube channel entitled Evangelizing Through Personal Testimony, and that is intended to help you to, to form your, old, your own hype craft, to make it your own, and hopefully we'll have more videos to, to encourage that in the future as well. You can do it because as St. Paul indicates, it will not really be you doing it. You're just the Holy Spirit's costume. So get some bling, maybe even hang a clock around your neck or a cross, and get out the hype of get out the hype about Jesus. Yeah, boy.